This is uh, one way to do cast on strips. It's the way I do them. There's plenty of other um, information on YouTube for other methods. Um, I usually do a weaving cast on, even though it's a brother machine. On the 270, 260 chunky machine, remember to put your weaving brushes in first before you attempt this. Um, bring needles into working position and then starting with the outermost one on the right, bring every other needle forward, thread your yarn, place it over um, the needles and knit across and knit back and basically keep doing that until you've got long enough to stick some weights on. This is not the most suitable of yarns. As it's a UK four ply and it's probably a bit thin. Once you've got going, you can take the weaving brushes out and continue as normal. The weaving brushes that I've just taken out. Can't remember how many rows I've done there. Probably about six. So do as many as you want really for however deep you think you want the hem I'll just do a few more you can make these as long needle width wise as you want because you can hang several I've only done a small one here so as not to uh, take up too much time. All right, pick up the hem from the bottom. Doesn't really matter how you do it, just sort of stick them on. This is not going to win any prizes for beauty. it's more functional than uh, beautiful talk much dissolves and then carry on knitting for however long as you want it you can um, obviously make them all the same size pull those forward as I've got two stitches on that's a very quick and dirty one um, now cast off round the gate pegs I'll come back when I've done that. Right, the cast on strip. As I say, you'd make them bigger than this probably. But again, if you only wanted to do a, a small bit, of, uh, narrow bit of knitting, it'd be quite handy. The, there's a gap there that you can put a um, metal bar in if you wanted to, or you needn't bother. Um, to use it, I'm going to put the carriage on the left. Bring forward a few needles, well, the size of the uh, cast on strip. I think I used 20 last time, or was it 10? I don't know. But anyway, you either just pick up top stitch here from where you've cast on and put it on the machine. I'm not sure you can see that. I'll start further over. Um, just pick them up and plonk them on. You may or may not have a weight um, in your in the hem. Um, or you're going to use cast on. Anyway, that's just just to give you an idea there. Bring them forward. Hang a couple of weights. 
I usually leave the carriage on the left because it, when you've done a row with ravel cord, it uh, leaves your carriage on the right. The ravel cord is the important bit. Do a row, ravel cord done, as you can see, and now you can e wrap with your main yarn. If you want to, oh, if you want to, or you can do an open cast on, or you can crochet cast on, or, or whatever you want, really. Do a quick e wrap. You can tell I'm not very good at doing videos. Just hope you can see this all right. So we've done e wrap cast on. Now knit in, I don't know, the back of the jumper. Just make sure that's uh, pull through. I always do my first e wrap too tight. But that'll do. Anyway. Here we are, knitting along on the back of the jumper, the front of the jumper, whatever it might be. And we've finished whatever it is. And we take it off the machine. Take the weights off. And the important bit is there's the Ravel cord and your knitting, and you pull the ravel cord out. You've got a closed edge there, that's your knitting because we did an e wrap. Obviously, if you'd done an open cast on, you would, you know, to pick up a hem, you would have picked it up, and your cast on strip what a beautiful piece of work it is is still there for you to use next time and next time it seems a you know it's a bit of a clap to make them all to start with but once you've got them in various strips they're so easy just to hook on use your ravel cord and pull you pull it out when you're finished no cast on combs were knowingly harmed during the making of this video thank you